Hi guys, welcome back to workshop. So this week's workshop video is something a little bit different again. Uh, we're going to be looking at what we're doing and this week's all about this car here. We've kind of took the engine out. Uh, we've removed all the seats, the dash, the differential. Uh, we've got two weeks on this car. We're going to take the engine completely to bits. Well, we're halfway through that. Um, so this car's having the upgrade that we offer. So that's um, rods, pistons, cams. Uh, we've actually ported the cylinder head, opened up the exhaust ports. Um, to the manifold. Um, so the plan is to get this engine all back together today um, and then hopefully back in the car Monday uh, on the rolling road Tuesday um, all in plan for the customer to collect his car on Friday. So it makes a good little video for us to show uh, what's involved. Now obviously the 2.5 Duratec engine um, we offer uh, an upgrade package to increase the performance from the 200 uh, brake horsepower um, to about 250, 260 um, depending. Now, obviously what that gives um, is a lot more power um, from the mid range to the top end, really expands the, the power up to about 7,000 RPM, which I guess is limited by um, the engine fundamentals in terms of its long stroke and piston speed. But the plan today is to have a little bit of a look what's involved. So obviously we've removed this engine, we've removed the old um, rods, pistons. These aren't going back in the car now. We've removed the, the standard Ford uh, flywheel that's not going back in the car, we're gonna go with a light and flywheel. So the standard cams, obviously it's a twin cam en engine, so it's got two cams, um, they're not going back. Head bolts are gonna be replaced by ARP head studs, which are currently in the new block. Um, also going to upgrade um, the flywheel, as we say. So this is a full steel light and flywheel. Considerable weight difference between the two. I don't have the numbers, but what we will do is we'll drop that into kind of below. Um, I get Ruth to do that. Um, clutch wise we've got a slightly upgraded diaphragm now as we're pushing the boundaries in terms of power we're also increasing torque so it's important that with this engine option that we offer um, we, we provide enough clamping force so we do that by an upgraded pressure plate but also by the clutch plate material itself so you'll notice here we've got a clutch plate that's got two different materials so it's got an organic material on one side uh, which is what you'd kind of find in the standard road clutch um, but then on the other side, it's got a more sintered um, paddle structure. Now this gives you the best of both worlds. It gives a, a really nice amount of torque holding, but it actually provides a really nice pedal. You don't get all the associated um, judder that you would just have a paddle plate. Um, so that works really well. And we've tried and tested this now on an handful of cars and we know that works really, really well. Okay, what we've got here um, is the rest of the engine to go together. So where I am at the moment in time, this engine now, rods, pistons are in, everything's been checked. We've checked all clearances, everything's been measured. We've rehoned the block. Um, I'm just waiting for the cylinder head. So Will, my colleague, is just installing the valves back in. Uh, once the valves are back in, uh, we'll start looking at some of this. So we've got the, the cam followers. Um, we're then gonna drop the cams in. We've got to obviously check and shim the cams. There might be some adjustments needed there. Uh, and then we can get together in terms of timing the engine back up timing cover, rocker cover, sump, etc. Um, the plan is that we should have that done by the end of the day, really. Um, what we've got here is a couple of products that we use um, for the build. Obviously, the Motul um, is the end oil that this engine will end up on, which is a fully synthetic motorsport oil. It's crucial that we don't put that in straight away. So we will be running in a running in oil and we'll run the engine in on the dyno. Uh, and this customer has opted to go for a waterless coolant system, um, which we've had some customers do. Um, and obviously this has got several advantages, um, but it's quite expensive. Um, yeah, so if we have a look at what's going on on my desk, not a great deal at the moment in time. I'm just waiting for the cylinder head, but we've got the new cams just here. So we've got um, obviously two cams. The exhaust cam um, is made from a, a cast iron um, piece and then obviously it's machined whereas the inlet cam is a full billet cam and the reason it's a full billet cam because this is a 2.5 it has the VVT and the VVT um, needs a special cam that obviously allows oil to flow through um, and also it supports the, the how it mates to the VVT mechanism as well as the trigger wheel so yeah so two cams um, ARP rod bolt sorry uh, in the engine ARP stud kit which is on there and we've got all these ready clean to go 
We've got a selection of lubricants as we obviously assembling the engine, we're using an assembly lubricant and this is the oil that we'll initially run the engine in. So the engine will probably do its first hour on the dyno, um, being ran in, we'll drop the oil, we'll check the oil for any contamination, we'll swap the oil for an higher premium such as the Motel uh, and then we'll continue the mapping. Okay, so just to talk a little bit about the rods and pistons, um, obviously the forged pistons, um, obviously steel connecting rods, what we're doing here is basically increasing the compression ratio and giving itself a, a bigger uh, valve cutout clearance so that we can run more uh, valve lift. Um, so if I just spin this over, obviously, we're retaining the same bore. Um, and then here, as you can see, these are steel uh, rods, ARP 2000 bolts. So if we just come over to Will, Will's uh, putting the cylinder head back together. Last couple of days, we've actually ported the cylinder head, opened it all up. Um, lapped the valves. Will's just now putting all the valves back in, making sure everything's meticulously clean. But yeah, the head's looking in its basic form at the moment in time. Hi, welcome back. So we're a few days on now. Um, we've kind of skipped a few sections, unfortunately. So towards the back end of last week, um, we kind of got it more or less together, put the cams back in. Um, and then obviously when we got to shim the cams, uh, as per normal, we realised that we needed to order some different buckets. So obviously we've ordered different buckets for the cams, everything's been shimmed up. The engine's now been put back together, um, but we're on a bit of a time scale, so we've not had much time to film as such. So we're in a position now where the engine is pretty much ready to go back in the car. Uh, next job, we're gonna mount the engine to the gearbox. Um, just talk about some bits that we've done. So the engine itself, um, flywheel, we've now gone a light and steel flywheel, upgraded the clutch as we saw already. Um, we've put the provision on for the oil cooler system, so we've got an oil cooler takeoff that's here. Found that easier to put on before it goes in the car. We may take the filter off, but it's just on just to protect it at the moment in time. Um, but yeah, the, the new water rail, or the revised water rail, which utilises the original 2.5 um, casting, um, it's going to go on back onto the car. Um, that combined with the 60mm core radiator, um, so the customer's going to have a whole new coolant system. Uh, what we've done on this car, because it's a high performance um, variant, we've gone with a lower thermostat. So um, these are normally 98 degrees. The one we've put in here is uh, 82 degree, um, just to keep the engine nice and cool. Um, upgraded the spark plugs, and they're all in. So engine's fully checked. Um, so next job, we'll get it in. By the end of today, um, should all be good. And then on the dyno tomorrow.